It is Tuesday. Tuesday here in Southern California. Beautiful weather. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather. My ladies behind me, ready for another show. Looking forward to doing this with an awesome, awesome lady. We've been able to enjoy doing some pre-recorded Zooms uh, that we have scheduled for uh, release at some point uh, that we'll get out there to everybody. Um, shows that we've been doing, as I do with a number of my guests uh, that uh, would like to do them. We do these pre-recorded Zooms in regards to narcissism, relationships, and recovery. Eve is here today. We've enjoyed doing uh, uh, one with her, and we have others planned. She is also a part of the... POP panel, P-O-P, panel of professionals that will be uh, a part of a free live Zoom show, event that you will be able to be a part of yourself. Up to 500 people can attend. It is free to you. We will be discussing narcissism and how to heal from it this Saturday, this Saturday at 1 p.m. That's Pacific Standard Time. Today, we're going to be looking at, uh, as everybody starts to roll in, Matthew and Soul Cousins, who will be here this Friday. Actually, their show is this Friday. Carla. Uh, I am Val Anderson. Igor, I guess that is. I'm going to just butcher that name. I love you guys for putting up with me. But right now we need to get to Ann. Uh, there's a whole lot more we're going to talk about, but let's go ahead and do this and get Ann in and talk about uh, trauma bonds. We did it. Hello. <laughs> oh, how are you? You sounding good. How are you doing? I'm good. How, yeah, is, is it the right camera angle? Is um, that okay? a, it, it is actually quite well. Yeah, bring it up just a little bit more. It's uh, bit, popping off the top bit. of your Can head you there. Uh, 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 right about there. That is How's absolutely that? perfect when you sit back. That looks great. That looks uh, okay, perfect. Good. Yeah, this is kind of like a test run for this coming Saturday, huh? That's kind of like what Isn't this is. Isn't it? Coming. I think we've been <laughs> taking over your, your page. <laughs> hey. If you hey, if you got it like that, you got it like that. What, what can you say? You know, some people have it like that, and if you got it, you got it. Uh, you have taken over uh, Narc Abuse TV uh, page uh, this week. Let's just put it that way, uh, along That's with right. your uh, your your cohorts in um, narcissism crime, uh, killing mm. narcissism uh, to the best that you can. Because uh, Michelle, Sarah, right, uh, yeah. Trisha. This would yeah. be awful if I forget everybody right now. This would really be embarrassing. I literally am having a senior moment. Uh, okay, let's do this. Sarah, don't don't help me. Don't help me. Sarah, <laughs> uh, Trisha, Michelle, uh, and uh, Anashka, and yourself. Anushka. Eve. Yeah. Man, I almost went blank well on everybody's name. That would have been awful. <laughs> um, anyhow, so this weekend uh, we are doing uh, the healing from narcissism. Uh, 2021, the first of so a three-part series. It's going to be great. Yes. Uh, open to up to 500 people. No registry. No registry. They don't have to register. register. Just click right <laughs> in. You can click right uh, in. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, just click join uh, in the group chat of up to 500 people. And uh, whoever's yeah, and there. Yeah, send any questions. Yes. If anyone's Go got any questions, send them over. Anything that you'd like us to discuss, anything that is challenging you, send them right in and we'll, and we'll try and get to all of them on Saturday. And whatever we don't get to will be a part of show number two or show number three. And mm -hmm. uh, then we're just going to keep going from there, depending on what needs to be done, so that we can answer as many questions as possible. There will be five professionals on the panel, coaches, uh, uh, as well as... Uh, those who are not coaches, uh, but maybe they wrote a book, an author of a book, as well as we will have anchoring the panel, a psychologist there, and that will be uh, Aska Nashka. Uh, she will be there as well. So yeah. five individuals available at your disposal really to work with you uh, through whatever challenges you're facing, uh, whichever way you've dealt with a toxic person, 
uh, at work, at home, whatever it may be, in a relationship, uh, they will be there to answer your question. Send the questions in uh, to anybody that's on the panel. Their pages are available to you, any of them. And uh, we already actually have a bevy of questions, uh, but that's why there's five people. (laughs) I was going to say, that's why there's five (laughs) people. There's so many questions. Uh, And sometimes when uh, these events take place, a lot of people can't make it or they they don't have the money to pay to be a part of it. Mm. This is free to you, uh, brought to you by, of course, Narc Abuse TV Network and uh, Rhythm Entertainment Productions. Uh, this will be the first of many uh, that you will see and be uh, able to join in. A number of people are rolling in. Today, we wanted to highlight something that's available to the public, mm, and that yeah. is a program that you have that specializes in breaking a bond. And the bond that needs to be broken is the trauma bond. But for those who may not know what it is and are just new on this journey, feel free to explain to them, uh, as we started to do in the pre-recorded Zooms that we're doing, what is a trauma bond, my friend? So a trauma bond is the connection that we make with a narcissist or a um, sociopath or a psychopath in 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 um place of love and so it can often feel like love because the hormones and the emotions that we experience when the trauma bonding is taking place are what we describe as love they are you know to us in society the way that we define love they sit in line with that And that oxytocin that you feel when you're in love with somebody, that's part of the process of forming the trauma bond. And initially, the body goes into this place where it builds this trauma bond with this person. uh, So it builds this bond with this person. But then when those um, subtle, uh, nuanced behaviours start happening, the emotional and psychological, um, those kind of games, those tactics that they use, that's when our body starts to um, try to rationalise what's going on. And that's when we start to form this trauma bond. And the way that um, I approach the trauma bond is with uh, three distinct distinct strands. So the trauma bond is like a very thick rope that you would, you know, like a ship's rope. Okay. You know, it's made up of very, very many smaller fibers that are actually on their own. They're not very strong, but the more that you collect them, the more that you twine them together, the stronger and stronger that rope gets. And and for me, the 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 bond is formed every time we go through the cycle of abuse. And so when we're going through that tension building phase, that outburst phase, then we go into that phase where we've got to reconcile where the gaslighting happens or we're taking responsibility for their behavior or we're minimizing it because they are stressed or they are going having a hard time at work or their sister really hasn't spoken to them for six months you know all of those reasons that's part of the uh, the phase as well and then the next phase we go into is the love bombing phase and often that's where we start on this cycle we start in that love bombing phase and we just keep going round and round and that creates actually a hormonal and a neurochemical addiction because in each of those phases, we experience a different hormone or a chemical that's released. So in the tension building phase, we've got a lot of adrenaline, we're hyper alert, we're very uh, on edge of waiting for whatever it is to come that's going to come. Then during that phase where there's an outburst, and that might be a physical outburst, it might be an emotional outburst, that's when we will experience a high level of cortisol. Okay. And many people well, everybody describes to me what are essentially cortisol um, uh, symptoms from having really high cortisol levels because that is the the loss of hair, the uh, tiredness, the digestive problems, you know, all of those things, they are down to the, that cortisol. And then you go into that reconciliation phase and that's when the dopamine's happening. And the dopamine is the 
is the driving force for pretty much all human behavior it's our reward center it's where we get our sense of achievement our prediction of a result and it's what drives us to actually keep keep doing things and when we experience high levels of dopamine what goes up has to come down and so we are in this place where we get imbalanced in our dopamine and that causes us to seek it out more and more and because after the dopamine we get this oxytocin as well we're going to keep on trying to get around that wheel back to the dopamine all the time and if it means we have to go through the adrenaline and the cortisol we will because our brain wants that hit And that's the physical side of it. That doesn't even begin to take into account the emotional side of it, where we experience something called cognitive dissonance, which I'm sure some of your some of your uh, watchers will be aware of cognitive dissonance. Others may not. And it's cognitive dissonance is this emotion, which is an aesthetic emotion, which means that we can resolve it both consciously and subconsciously. So we can either choose to resolve cognitive dissonance or our brain will do it for us. And when we experience cognitive dissonance, it's that feeling of tension when someone's behavior doesn't match the beliefs we've got about them. And so when we experience that, we might see that their behavior is Um, So we've met them, we've fallen in love with them, we've gone through that love bombing stage and suddenly they do something which just doesn't uh, doesn't align at all. And rather than um, exploring that, rather than seeing that for what it is, we Mm -hmm. will then start to try and rationalise that, to try and minimise that tension we're experiencing at that time because we don't want to believe it. And, you know, that's perfectly normal. We don't don't Mm want to believe that the person that we have you know got this idea of as being this perfect person for us you know that's potentially our soulmate you know all of that language is often banded around at the start of these relationships to have to then accept that we might be wrong that can be too painful and so we we start to um we start to try and rationalize it we start to try and justify the behaviors and as that's going on we essentially we essentially feel that they are a good fit because mm-hmm. we are then allowing them and we chose them and we see them as a good fit. You just made a really good point. We would have to admit we were wrong. That may be hard mm. to swallow. It may, now, 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 now we may have to not just, not just for ourselves and our own pride, but just for the fact that now all friends and family in our mm-hmm. mind, may think, Oh my goodness. Now I got to say in front of everybody, I chose incorrectly. And I thought That's I had right. my, act, even, my act together. From a, and even from a physiological level, we've got to give up the dopamine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. something that is driving. There's no rationalizing that. That's the body is like, give, hang on, this is where we get give, these good. Yeah. This is where we get this great <laughs> shot of dopamine from. What, what we can, we're yeah, not going to give right. that up. Yeah. It's like remember uh, what so it was yeah. like. Remember what it was like before. You sure you want to give this up because we're feeling pretty mm-hmm. good here. We're, we've got somebody exactly. that walked with us down the street. We got somebody to do stuff with. I get what you're saying. Go mm-hmm. ahead, please. Yeah. And yeah. And so then we've got, so that happens, that cognitive dissonance where these, where these positive memories that we've got of the relationship are overlaid with traumatic memories and it just becomes a mess and we can't work it out. We can't work out what was real, what wasn't real. And this could be happening subconsciously as well. When we're in the relationship, completely unaware of what this person may well be, what kind of personality disorder they have. And the other thing that happens as well you know the way that I approach the trauma bond of having the three strands is the third strand is the energetic strand it is this kind of connection this ethereal connection that we we form with a person where you know everything about them and us aligns in some way the weird and wonderful way that we've crossed paths in life Mm -hmm. often and this is something that I have found over and over again with the people that I um that I work with is often there has been a point in life where they've passed their path with the narcissist has crossed Mm -hmm. before they've then actually 
become a couple and it's almost like there's this kind of strange connection that has formed and I'm sure depending on different belief systems and different kind of spiritual ideas that there are plenty of ways that this can be described and whether it is a kind of a a twin flame a karmic a karmic Mm -hmm. connection or, or what have you but that definitely seems to be a strong part of the trauma bond that people feel this connection and actually in the relationship they might something that I experienced an awful lot was I would my phone would ring when I was thinking about him like I would think about him and then the phone would ring or I would go to the supermarket and I would think I suddenly think, oh, I need to get such and such. And then I'd get home and he would say, oh, you forgot to put such and such on the list. And I was like, I've got it. I remembered in the supermarket. And it was at the same time that he was thinking about it. You know, there were these weird things that I just couldn't explain. And it all went to reinforce. I have a a question before you say about the reinforce. I have a question. So if you if you were thinking that, hey, man, I wish he wasn't a jerk, did that happen too? And then all of a sudden he stopped being a jerk? I don't have that <laughs> level of power. <laughs> I was just I'm wondering. I'm working on it. <laughs> no, we, we've never discussed that, but when you said it, it just popped in my head. Well, if you had that much power, maybe you could have said, hey, I wish he would really cooperate with me. Okay, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Oh, I think I probably thought. had a few you of those thoughts. I definitely <laughs> so, had those thoughts, yeah. You're, get, but you're, yeah getting, definitely... you're getting a lot of hearts on the screen. I just want you to know that just in case you missed that. There's <laughs> a lot of a lot of love for what you're talking oh, about right you. now. Go ahead, please. Go oh, ahead. lovely. Yeah, so we've got these three strands happening. And actually, depending on you and your relationship and what kind of person you are, what kind of processor you are, how you how you're kind of your best um you learn best, will depend on what part of the trauma bond really kind of sits heavy with you the bit that you find the most difficult to break so for some people you know the addiction to those hormones is the hardest bit to break because they're naturally inclined to an addictive you know personality a cycle others find that it's the spiritual connection you know this sense that we're destined to be together and we should be together at all costs and it doesn't matter what it takes we are meant to be together you know god the universe source has brought us together and we are going to you know we're going to prove that we can do this you know for some people that's the strongest part from but others it's the memories it's that but we had such a great time when we were on holiday or we you know we had you know we had wonderful experiences he's a good dad you know those kinds of thoughts that are spinning it positively when it comes to the emotions and the memories and when we can get an idea of which part your trauma bond is kind of most dominant in couple that with working out your processing mix how you best process that's when you can then start to really have a really strong strategy to break the trauma bond that's going to work for you because they're as unique as the relationships that they came out of the behaviors may be similar you know we all have shared characteristics narcissists have shared characteristics survivors have shared have shared characteristics correct but actually Our experiences are all as unique as we are as individuals. And so finding our personal kind of strategy is the key to breaking your trauma bond. When it comes to breaking the bond, it cannot be broken unless we recognize what makes it. Is everything okay there? (laughs) Yeah, there, can you hear my daughter? Is there, I just want to make sure everything's okay. No, she's, there, yeah, she's being cared for, but it's bedtime. <laughs> okay, all right. I appreciate you so much doing this. When it comes to breaking the bond, it's not something that someone can just say, hey, Blanket, you need to stop this. Everybody has their own unique experience, correct? That's right, absolutely. And absolutely. Their emotion, the emotions and the chemical connection and as it were, addiction to uh, what's taking has taken place is not something people can just ignore. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Right. And it's 
it's behave you know we have to change some behaviors in order to communicate to whichever element of the bond that's most dominant for us that we mean we mean to break it now we we want to break this bond we, we're making a conscious decision and the way that i do um i work with with my one-to-one and will be in this group program that i'm uh, starting at the beginning of november is using this strategy of act release divert and so we've got sets of actions which are absolutely aligned to your processing type so once we know what kind of processor you are then we can choose the things to do that are going to work and you know you don't even have to think about some of these things they you can do them and they just are working away in the background working on your subconscious to reprogram it and to bring you that to cut those strands and it really is a case of consistent action and small actions that break those little tiny fibers and eventually you know that big rope loses its strength and you yeah. are free you you have to know that that as a dad i'm telling you if you need to take care of that we can take a commercial break and come back I'm just, no it's honestly I'm just, fine i just want to throw it i just want to throw it out there i'm just saying don't don't mind me I, I'm just, my mom bless her uh, is looking uh, is with uh, okay. her but the oh, bedroom's well. next door yeah. so it's yeah. a bit no. close but she's about no. to go off i can tell it's a sleepy uh, cry uh, yeah <laughs> uh, yeah Hey, you know what? I agree with you. I agree with you a thousand percent. I remember those sleepy cries. I, I, I just, I, my daughters, you know, they're thirty, and I, they still make that same noise. No, I'm just kidding. They don't. I'm gonna, <laughs> they're I'm not gonna, gonna thank it. you I'm for gonna, that. Fact, I'm, no, they're, no, they're not, <laughs> it was funny in my head. It should have never came out of my mouth. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get payback on that. I just know I am. Okay, on the screen, I'm just gonna read some things to you, just so you know what's yeah, happening absolutely. here. That uh, the, beside the tons of hearts that are flowing across the screen uh, for you. Uh, and so and says about the the fight or flight uh, comes into play. Uh, others would, right. Just talk a little bit more about that, and I'm going to read some more to you that everyone is saying to you. Yeah. So the com- fight or flight that cor- that cortisol stage of that that cycle that I described. That's when that fight or flight mode is activated. And actually, we do that fight, flight, freeze or even fawn where we try and placate the the abuser to try and make the behavior go away. Uh, or we freeze. We don't know what to do. And I think actually the majority of people would say that they that they go into a freeze mode um, later on in the relationship, depending on how things go that's when the fight mode can often come out because, you know, people get tired and people get wise to the cycle. And so yeah. they try to change what happens during that. But for a lot of people, for a long time, the freeze mode is the one that really dominates. Um, and, and I just want to say, so if um, oh, well, look, um, my door is now open and here comes the here comes the here comes Sherlock, oh, our cat, our cat that just came back from the vet. <laughs> And he's like wandering around. I'm sorry. No, I just saw something moving out of the corner of my eyes. So we're all good. I just, I just that that's that's my baby now. So my my baby has just uh it, it's up and walking around. Um, uh, you may hear it make some noise. Anyhow, I just wanted to say that I just saw something moving Is out of the corner of my eyes. Is it a cat or a dog? No, it's a cat. It's a cat. No, we're yeah. working on it. We're working on a dog. That's the next thing that's going to happen. But anyhow, Aww. what I was gonna, what I wanted to mention to you is um some of the things that are being said here. Um, I'm sorry to. Mm. to change the subject and pivot from what you were just saying with all due respect, but um, mm-hmm. beautiful okay, words that you're highlighting, but Anne says because of how he talking about the, the toxic person uh, that was in her life uh, because of how he was at the start, I kept looking for that person I met yeah. at the start. Is that normal? It absolutely. It is because, you know, we are also projecting all the time our reality and the people that we meet we're always projecting it's a perfectly healthy psychological mechanism that we use to make sense of everything that we're experiencing and so it's totally normal to project our good qualities into them and it's only when their behaviors don't match that we start to experience that cognitive dissonance that i was describing but in doing so we're, we're trying to deny one of the ways to resolve cognitive dissonance is to deny that there's any any problem just to just to pretend that there isn't to believe that 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 person that you met initially and that the 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 idea of the person that you formed 
Mm. That has to be the real deal. This can't be the real deal. That had to be the real so, deal. So because he, I'm the, the real deal. So, right. And that's the thing. Because right. I'm the real deal, he must be the real deal. Right. Because I'm the same person as I was at the start of the relationship, or she, he, or, you know, or he is. He, and she has got having, to be the real just deal. A, he's just having a bad day. Or exactly. I said, I said, or, you know, I said, something's I said going the on wrong at work. Or I said yeah. the wrong thing. I wore the wrong thing. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have. I should have been quicker mm -hmm. to do this. All of a sudden, yeah, I spoke like to you the said, wrong person in the yeah. bar. Right, right, right. Uh, oh, maybe I gave off the wrong signal. That's why he's jealous. Yeah. And so we will start to na navigate our life in a different way because they really are showing their true colors. And we're in control of our life. And that's quite a, a normal, again, healthy thing to do is that we come out of a situation where it's not gone as we'd expect it to. We sit back, we reflect, we think about the things that we did in that situation and we think about the things we could change in the future. That's something that we can do as healthy individuals with a self-awareness that they can't because a narcissist at their very core lacks self-awareness. They lack the ability to generate self-awareness unless they undergo real commitment to therapy and engage and practice the techniques of self-awareness that they're taught. And they have to continually adopt those techniques, you know, through the day, like a recovering addict has to continually make the choice not to use or to drink or to gamble or to shop or you know anything like that they have they would have to make the choice not to put themselves to first not well, to, to lack use, empathy to use to use or to gamble with people's emotions or all they essentially exactly. have to do to the same the thing you just yeah to get to, to take from others uh, unjustly they have to still do the same as if they were uh, recovering from uh, alcoholism or some drug addiction yeah but but the the other person in the relationship shouldn't take it on themselves to try to force them into therapy or anything because re realistically we can only as you said take care of the power that we have and control that absolutely. we have absolutely you nobody can change anybody else we can only ever change ourselves and spending sleepless nights wanting and hoping them to change well it, it's kind of like the kid that wants to go to disneyland or or take this trip and they don't have the money to do it or the power to drive a car. To they don't have a car. They're, they, it's, it's in someone else's power. They can only control yeah. what, what they can do. And that may be taking a good night's sleep. And so sometimes we can lose sleep over somebody that doesn't want therapy and we may need to Absolutely. recognize that. Yeah. And, you know, that can be one of the hardest things to to come to the realization. And, you know, one of the one of the key breakthrough moments as well, when you really do realize that you can want somebody to be better, yeah. you can want yeah. them to be good, yeah. but they have to they have to take the steps. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, a, a comment here is uh, from Amber. Amber says the highs are hard to let go. Uh, so if a, if a person was relatively mi minding their own business or in a in a in a feeling kind of a low state romantically or job wise, they go to work for this person that seems to have them on a high. But they're a narcissistic mm -hmm. bo boss or a sibling that's narcissistic. And every time you deal with them, there's always something to put you down and not make you feel mm -hmm. self-esteem. Uh, so then they give you that little, would you say love bombing? They give you that little bit to yeah, make you feel like. You're the top of the world, and then they turn right around and pound you upside the head again. But like Amber says, and you highlight it, those highs that you get after being beat up, they start to be addictive is what you're saying. Absolutely, they're addictive because they are the dopamine area of the brain. Now, um, this is purely from my own interest in the field. And mm -hmm. uh, my sister's a psychiatrist, so we have lengthy discussions about, yeah. about this kind of thing. But the research around dopamine I re I remember is something you that... I remember you highlighted that the first time you were on the show. Yeah. Uh, or, yes. yeah. So this is an inside information thing you're giving us. Yeah, yeah. So the, the dopamine area of the brain and where we release dopamine is in the pain pleasure center of the brain. And when we experience something that's pleasurable, it's kind of like a seesaw in your brain. And or a, what would you call it there? A teeter totter? A yeah, teeter. Yes, teeter totter. <laughs> 
So I know, I know. Um, you're the you're the UK. We're in the we're in the US. We may say things differently, but we understand each other. But go ahead. But we can translate. I get translate. I, yeah, yeah, translate. So yeah. Go ahead. When the um, when something pleasurable happens, the dopamine gets released. Uh, but the brain can't sustain being in a state where we've got a high level of dopamine for a long time. So it very quickly recognizes that, yeah, this feels good, but we've got to come down. So it kind of sends in these uh, opposing um, neurotransmitters and that starts to bring the level down. But instead of it bringing it slowly to center, it actually mm -hmm. puts you into a pain part to try and bring it like that. Oh, okay. All right. And so what me what that means is that for any pleasure that you experience, you're going to have to have equal but opposite pain just to bring you level. Mm. And that's mm -hmm. what we experience when we're coming down is mm -hmm. that's why, you know, there could be high levels of anxiety, depression, intrusive thoughts. All of that is the brain trying to get us into what, it's called homeostasis because the brain wants to be balanced. And if we, uh, what we kind of do as human beings naturally, and this is the same with any kind of addiction, is we then go straight for more of the thing that makes us feel high, gives us the pleasure. And our brain then constantly trying to bring it back down. And we're just spending all of our time trying to navigate this, this dopamine seesaw. And actually, the thing that we have to do is we have to experience the pleasure in a healthy manner. Okay. And we can experience dopamine in healthy ways. You know, there are okay. lots of things that we can do to experience high uh, levels of dopamine and reward based activities. But then we have to allow the brain to self-regulate. We have to kind of sit with it. And that's the oh. bit that's very difficult to do is to do the sit with it. So what we can do while we're sitting with it is we can use other areas of our brain okay. that are going to allow the brain to come back into a level, play, like a level, level up that seesaw. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we will have resolved whatever it was that, that's gone on. And we can carry on with our with our kind of day to day okay. and that's what a lot of the activities that I uh, use with the, with the ladies that I work with is okay. about using other areas of the brain especially when we're experiencing that hormonal cycle okay I love it I love it I love it you're so awesome you're so awesome <laughs> if you if you haven't figured out I think you're awesome I totally think you're awesome this is such good information that needs to be discussed and out there. Mm. And, and, I think the trauma bond needs to be spoken about yes, so yes. much because it, it it resonates with so many people. And yeah. you know, we are all human beings at the end of the day. And you yeah. know, what chance have we got when our body is putting us through this? <laughs> and yeah. actually, where we get the hit, it's, it's not illegal to spend time with a person. You know, it's actually so socially acceptable to have a partner. You know, it's yeah, not like there, these are these big kind of flags that are saying oh no you can't do that and yeah. but that's what we are we're addicted to this cycle and a mm -hmm. lot of people like i say some people are much more kind of energetically linked and they're not disposed to these kind of cycles in terms of the hormonal and the neurotransmit neuro neurochemical addiction but some of us and me especially that was where i was at i was addicted yeah. to these and that's that's why I'm going to touch on this. You can expand on it later if if you so wish. That's why you uh, you have your is it a Facebook group? Am I saying that right? Uh, and, yeah. Uh, so just touch on that real quick. So, yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody. I love. Oh, it's a lovely uh, community, a Facebook community. But we actually do uh, three times a week. We meet on yeah. Zoom and we just yeah. chat. So on a Sunday, I do a little presentation about something and we chat about it. Then on a Wednesday, we do something which is um, we do an hour of talking about something we've experienced inside the relationship so maybe gaslighting maybe it's the silent treatment we talk about our experiences of that and then we talk about we do an hour of talking about how to heal from it what we can take from it how we can you know take it forward and we can yeah. you know try and and try and take the wisdom from the grief and so that's a really nice balancing yeah. uh, session yeah, right. Right. and then on a friday we do a bit more of a social so we yeah. just like we yeah. chat and we catch yeah. up with each other because you know we've we've 
formed really great friendships inside the group and we've actually had our first in-person meetup over here as well Whoa, where I didn't we've know that. Okay. been and met Whoa. so yeah it's cool. such and you know that is one of the really important parts of breaking the trauma bond is in my strategy that I use so I use the act part which is the actions that are going to communicate to the subconscious that you want to break the trauma bond but mm -hmm. then in doing that naturally we are going to experience a lot of build up a build up of energy a build up of emotions and yeah. that's when we use the release so the release is done through creativity through you know making things writing things yeah. communication and yeah. one of the really brilliant ways to release is to connect with other survivors to connect with people that have experienced the same things as you to talk yeah. about it to be validated and that is such a good release because you spend an hour chatting with somebody who gets you and yeah. you feel like the healing fairies have been in <laughs> the healing fairies that's pretty that's very interesting i have to say there's so much uh, in front of me here to, to discuss with you. I'm going to try to keep a, uh, a big chunk of it uh, to be discussed uh, when we do our free live Zoom event this Saturday together, mm -hmm. uh, along with uh, the, the other uh, professionals that will be on the panel. Uh, our pop uh, live free Zoom on narcissism, healing of narcissism 2021, the first of a three-part series, educational series, with five you heard me right, five panelists uh, that will be there at your disposal to answer your questions and have a huge uh, group chat, which uh, is the objective. This will be the first one. Uh, we can uh, have up to 500 people within that group chat. You don't have to register. You don't have to spend any money. It is free. It is put on uh, by us here at Narc Abuse TV Network. Uh, but we have Eve. We will have Sarah, we will have uh, Michelle, uh, we will have Trisha, as well as uh, a psychologist uh, who is uh, well-known on uh, YouTube, Ask Anashka, mm -hmm. will be there as well. So you will have an opportunity to talk to a number of different people and ask a number of questions. Uh, I will be your moderator uh, in that Mich Michelle uh, Dixon will be your host. Uh, we are looking forward to making this and many more available to you as uh, Narc Abuse TV uh, Network will put on a number of events uh, that will give you people you can connect with just like uh, my beautiful friend here, Eve. Uh, Eve, i got to read something to you from Matthew. Matthew Reality says, Excuse, excuses to justify. That we could find ourselves in situations where we really need to see what's happening, but we will make, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, excuses to justify. But yet a person can also then turn right around and beat themselves up because they've made that excuse instead of just absolutely you know, dealing, and you know, dealing with what they really saw talk about that a little bit so a person doesn't be, yeah, beat themselves up too much so when we experience cognitive dissonance which i described this feeling of someone's behavior not matching your belief about them and you're experiencing a tension as a result and that tension needs to be resolved and the way we resolve that I'm going to use a little analogy that I use. So uh, if you say you said to me, you're on a diet and so you're on this diet and I say to you, oh, well, I've got this delicious slice of apple pie right here. And now you've okay. got the tension. I'm on a diet. That's my belief. <laughs> But the behavior what is, what is, is wrong, about... What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you to tell me that right now? That is like so torture. But go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Are you hungry? Go ahead. <laughs> well, and I love apple pie, but go right ahead, my friend. Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. So you've got some options now. You're feeling a sense of tension. You want the apple pie, but you've already said you're on a diet. <laughs> and so the first thing you can do is you can not have the apple pie. You can stick Boo. with your belief Boo. and you can not have the apple pie and you can okay. sit with the feeling and then that's okay. The next thing you can do is you can say that you are going to have the apple pie but you're going to work out for an extra half an hour on the treadmill. So you're going to add in a compensating behavior there. You're going to say, I okay. am going to do something right. to resolve that. So let's think about that in terms of somebody's behavior. Well, they behave in a way that doesn't match. You think 
oh well next time I'm not gonna wear that outfit or I'm gonna oh. make sure that I cook his favorite meal or her or make sure we go to her favorite film with her favorite actor you know I'm gonna add in a compensating behavior to try and resolve the tension I feel about their behavior or you can um say to yourself that you are you're not having oh, sorry the apple pie is fruit and therefore it is healthy uh, okay go ahead yeah so that yeah. so in that sense you are just changing your belief curses, about the curses apple pie I, cur curses i've been found out okay good so go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. And yeah, and so you can say it's fruit, it's, it's, yeah. I'm not having any cream with it, it's not no, even no. healthy, it doesn't even yeah. contradict my diet. And that's yeah. that denial behavior. And that's that <gasps> way to, to resolve the tension is to say, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not as bad as I think it is. They're not really doing that. I'm using the excuse. Um, and yeah, so that is how we can resolve cognitive dissonance. And so we've got these options, but we can see how in a relationship or with a parent or a sibling, you know, we try and minimise or justify the behaviour or take responsibility for it ourselves, because that's the bit that we can control. The denial of the behaviour that creates that tension for us is literally creating a problem for us not just in a given relationship, but you're saying also for us physically, we are creating yeah. a problem yeah. for ourselves, And then the other person is going to say, well, Hey, you didn't stand up for yourself. Then you didn't speak exactly. up when this is, when this is obviously not right. And you didn't speak up at all, or you made a whimper then I might as well be able to do more and I can do whatever I want. Absolutely. And those boundaries get pushed and pushed and pushed. And then yeah. you don't feel like you've got your voice to stand yeah. up because you've, mm -hmm. uh, you've let so many behaviours pass by. And actually, that's that build up. And for some people, they experience just so much cognitive dissonance and they have got so much tension that they can't possibly face up to the reality. And they never do. You know, yeah. they never do get to the point where they are able to, you know, to actually accept for what they can see in front of them because it's it be, too it painful. Become, it, it becomes a pattern. It almost becomes as if they're in this chasm, they're in this hole in which all the dirt's being thrown and it's on top of them. And it's like, what's the point of me fighting back? I might as yeah. well go with it because I'm going to end up alone. Uh, I was one, one of, one of my guests told me uh, they used to think before they got free from the narcissist or escaped the narcissist, uh, they would say, well, I'm just going to end up a cat lady and I'm going to be all by myself and nobody's going to want mm -hmm. me. Well, um, remarried and moving on and the author of a book, she recognized that wasn't true. It was just, That's no, not, I'm just saying, it yeah. was something, an abstract thought or she saw somewhere else and thought it was going to happen to her. And believe me, that's far from the truth. She doesn't even look the same as she did when she was with him. Uh, he, yeah. really missed, he really missed out and another guy came into her life that was way better. Uh, but she thought yeah. at the time, I might as well just let him just keep abusing me. And you know, were. that's, that's what happens to our self worth. Yeah. You know, I think everybody gets to a place where their self worth is diminished to a point where they get to that pain point, you know, that point of, am I going to forsake myself for the, for the familiar, for mm -hmm. what I know, for and you know you know we feel in love with these people and so it's totally normal to think and you know what society does have a bit of a narrative about you know relationships being hard work about forsaking yourself for your partner you know there's a narrative there that actually for some people and if they've seen their parents in a similar sort of dynamic actually breaking the cycle is a huge undertaking and anybody that's broken the cycle or wants to break the cycle is a really really strong person even and, if they don't know, feel it you right know now. and the reality of it is in many different instances whether it's getting a job to moving to somewhere a new relationship with a landlord once the ground rules are set before an adventure is taken and standards are in place and principles and guidelines before a relationship starts uh, self-esteem and respect uh, is what will come from that uh, and that can be mm -hmm. hard if we've already entered a relationship and we didn't have those in place 
because of, yeah. like you said, maybe we saw our uh, parents or whatever it may be. I, I have to, I have to get to some stuff here that everybody's yeah. writing. I see, I see everybody writing. I'm not forgetting you. It's just that I, lo- I, I love, it. I enjoy uh, listening to uh, Eve talk about these uh, these aspects of relationships, but especially the trauma bond. I'm looking at, and please forgive me, I will say this to the best of my ability, a Ahopley, uh, A-H-O-P-L-E-Y, uh, she writes, but is constant conflict healthy? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not, no. And, you know, that's where we see lots of chronic illnesses that people you know develop over time i personally i developed a um, lactose intolerance during my relationship so now wow. i can't have any dairy wow, wow. You, and so you, and that, you, that's you, the life you line up with a number of people since uh, we've been doing this um i think i said this uh, about a week or so ago um people have lost their hair people have ended mm-hmm. up with seemingly permanent eye twitches and L- yeah. uh, lose, losing eyesight. I mean, I've I've had people tell me some of the most interesting things that have happened to them because of being in a state of constant conflict. Absolutely. Uh, that is Absolutely. Perpe- perpetrated by someone who has narcissistic traits, self-absorbed mm-hmm. behavior, toxic, whatever label we want to put to it, diagnose or undiagnose, it's just an unhealthy environment. And, uh, Absolutely. And, they, and that they love living in it. They love living in it. Yeah, they do. They thrive off it. They absolutely thrive off living in it. But that external experience, we internalize it and often it presents in our health. And, you know, like you say, there is a whole plethora of things that people describe and all often come back to that prolonged exposure to cortisol. You know, adrenal, adrenal, um, Gla- where you're at oh gosh what's adrenal, it called? Gland, adrenal glands yeah where your that- adrenal glands are where you when you're experiencing high level oh, adrenal fatigue when you experience high yeah. levels of adrenaline somebody's just written the body keeps the score and that is absolutely right yeah, yeah louisa yeah. hay that book is is yeah. it's just absolutely right it keeps the it does keep the score mm-hmm. and actually the different parts of your body can often indicate where the focus needs to be in terms of yeah. healing and Michelle yeah. who's on the panel on Saturday that was a good link yeah. wasn't it <laughs> no, she no. is a <laughs> yeah I know I literally just thought of her right before you said it hey, yeah you just, did, you just did that to me no I'm just kidding I did okay, it go, maybe go it was me <laughs> no no um, no she she talks about it. She's a, she's a, she's a, she releases trauma from the body. She's very yeah. focused on body yeah. healing and trauma yeah. release. And I absolutely, I, you know, there's some fantastic um, techniques coming out yeah. now to release trauma from the body. Yeah. And this um, one that really springs to mind um, that I have tried and I did find it quite profound was um, this induced shaking. So you yeah. get your body into a position where you begin to tremor and the tremor actually releases trauma from the body. Yeah. And when you initially start doing it, you experience like these like fits of laughter initially <laughs> or pe- some people experience <laughs> laughter. Some You're people right, experience yeah. crying. And yeah, yeah it's quite, quite incredible. The different some, some things wanna, that are some out wa- there now. Some, some want to take a nap. I actually met someone that told me they, they tried it and they immediately wanted to just take a nap. And then they were really? fine. They did the shaking. But normally it's laughter or crying that can happen yeah, for most yeah, people. Yeah. Or, or they do the rocking uh, or, or a number yeah, of different things. Yeah, well, there's a lot of number of different things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to actually have to do a, a full show on that. Maybe with Michelle again. I did one with her. But yeah. It, she has some, actually, there's some interesting techniques. But uh, Chris, Kristen, uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Rivers says the body keeps the score. That is uh, indeed a book uh, mm. that uh, is highlighted. I've got to read something to you. And it was, oh, here we go. Uh, the PAC coach uh, says this, uh, that, that the trauma bond can be treated similar as an alcohol addiction. Uh, your thoughts on that? Uh, some of the steps that I think, so. I think like any yeah. addiction and uh, yeah I absolutely think that the 12 step program for an, an example for addiction is something that I can see a lot 
of alignment with i haven't gone through the 12-step program myself yeah, but neither, i have neither, right? yeah. researched it and i have mm. spoken and met with lots of people that have experienced it and actually often um with the lady the few ladies that i have um mentored who have been through the 12-step program when i talk to them about utilizing the 12 steps for this mm. it all just clicks and you know because they know it works and it has a it has all of those things so it has the mm -hmm. abstinence for one so you get that chemical withdrawal that you have to go through yeah. but also yeah. it has the spiritual element as well the 12-step yeah. program mm -hmm. which makes breaking that ethereal connection and transcending what it is that the experience has, has come into your life to, te yeah. to teach you mm -hmm. and garnering that wisdom from mm -hmm what you've been through all becomes part of the 12 step program. So I think absolutely um, breaking this kind of addiction, like any addiction, depending yeah. on your relationship to the addiction and the underlying pain, there's okay. definitely alignment. All right. Now I have to do this to you. We've gone 50 minutes and I've got, okay. a, there's so much Gosh, happening. Really? Here. I've got a, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, I, I, Come on now, we're not your first time doing a sh not your first time doing a show with me. You know, time will fly, but I got to read some stuff to you that people are saying about you. Okay, so and beside okay. the love, the love in the hearts, you get on the screen. Uh, everyone in the world needs to know about this dopamine balance that's coming from Amber. Amber has uh, uh, been on the show numerous times. She's very much so loved I agree, I uh, on the show from last year, and uh, she's agreeing with you. Uh, and she also says. Uh, she is awesome, talking about you. And then earlier she had asked me, Paxton, where did you find her? Uh, she was talking about you. And that you're a that you're, that you're a merchant. <laughs> just kind of, Eve! Eve! <laughs> yeah, I ty actually, actually, I typed in the word Adam, and then your name popped up. So anyway, I was little, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm just joking. But um, she, you get, I'm just telling you some of the compliments that are here. That's just a few. So uh, the um, trauma bonding mm -hmm. needs to be unnormalized that's according to mm. amber she's agreeing with you uh that trauma bond is tough uh, and says that trauma bond is tough to get through it like going cold turkey you want them but you know it's toxic for you is what she said that's right um, that's exactly it and it's a battle um, it's a real battle yeah you you get a lot of people and i see what you say there and thank you for the apple reference uh she has encouraged me to eat <laughs> Eat the apple pie, of course. Just eat the apple, she says uh, to just me. Just eat the apple uh, pie. Just eat it. Yeah, because that's technically what I would say now. I don't, you know, I used to be a per I used to be a personal trainer. I gave it all up. I just eat whatever now and just try to go walk <laughs> walk, walk it off. Okay. Um, here we go. Question, question for you. Since you're here, I know we're going to talk about something else, but let's hold off on that. Mm -hmm. Um, another question here. How do you separate from the emotional investment after 30 years? That's from, uh, uh, please feel free to put in a name if you like, because I am sorry I'm butchering your name. I'm just going to say that's from uh, Lady Hope. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. who you are. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's such a difficult thing to have to process and accept that, you know, potentially 30 years of your time, you know, and well, you might feel like it's wasted. But we are all on our own individual paths through life. And actually, no matter, there are lots of people out there that never, they never get free. They live their life in that That's cycle true. forever. And That's so true. coming to that realization, be it finding yourself here, finding yourself committed to your own healing, you know, you're showing yourself deep self love. And that, it doesn't matter how much time you've got ahead of you or behind you really really experiencing that really throwing yourself into mm -hmm. that self-love and showing yourself all that love and that compassion and that understanding that you once showed them to yourself it can bring miracles you know it can bring that happiness that you never thought was going to come and any moments of that there were there were there, to me it's worth the pain that i went through and i chalk it up to experience yeah, you you um keep moving you're high, forward. You're yes, keep moving forward. That's uh, I'm glad you said that. That's one of the big things that uh, we talk about here, and I'm so glad you mentioned that. Keep moving forward. Uh, that time uh, that you've experienced uh, some of 
some of what you can do uh, can be found in the program that Eve has that will be out next month, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Did you say November? Yeah. Okay. So it uh, starts so in November. Yeah. Okay. So it's in November. But that program, everyone, uh, I've got a few more things I'm going to read from the screen in a second. But I want to mm. mention, th mention this since that was brought to our attention uh, by Lady Hope here. I'm just giving her a new name <laughs> here. Um, Break the Bond program uses the easy model to create a space for survivors to come together and break the trauma bonds together. Mm. Fundam fundamental part of the success of breaking bond relies on you identifying what type of processor you are and then formulating a strategy that is going to work for you. Now, of course, feel free to watch, the, watch this back, but uh, you know your program. You outlined some points here. Uh, mainly we did this, this information I have here is for our pre-recorded Zoom that we're doing, mm. uh, but uh, I wanted to touch on it here in a live that we do together. Uh, the fundamental part of the success of breaking the bond, what, you, what you're writing here, says relies on you identifying what type of processor you are. What does that mean? Yeah, so we all process in different ways. So some of us, uh, we really lean towards visual processing. So you you might know yourself if you are a visual processor because you like to um, you like to uh, watch tv when you're bored or you know you might find yourself watching videos if you've got nothing to do or if you're waiting in the line at the store you're looking around at the things that are on offer mm -hmm. whereas if you're an auditory processor you're listening and you are much better at when you're learning something you want yeah. somebody to be reading the notes back to you or you want to read yeah. them out loud or you want someone to ask you yeah. questions or you might be a kinesthetic processor whereby you need to be doing for anything for it to work for it to sink in you've got to do it you want to build it you want to make it you want to cut it you want to stick it whatever it is you want to do it and once we can establish that mix because everybody leans towards one but actually interestingly some people when they are processing emotions actually lean towards a different one than is their dominant one when they're processing information and so mm. once we can work yeah. out your mix and we can work out which one is going to really really speak to you on a subconscious level then we can start selecting activities for you to undertake that are going to really work for you in terms of communicating your desire to cut your trauma bond to both your conscious and your subconscious and so, that one, when they're in when they're working together the subconscious and the conscious then they're unstoppable but it's getting them working together that is the the trick so we're not talking about you just telling someone you need to stop the trauma bond and you need to do that. No. You're helping them implement a lifestyle that's based upon the way they process information, if I understand yeah, you correctly. In, absolutely, just integrating. And they are just like 10, 15-minute activities, maybe, mm -hmm. some da maybe daily every other day, right. you know, things that – and actually, once you get into the swing of it, the beauty of it is you can start to convert things that you already do – into okay. bond breaking activities okay. so once once you get your head around how this works and the things that are going to work for mm -hmm. you you can actually make things that you already do daily start to work for communicating to your subconscious that mm -hmm. you want to break the bond so we're talking about not just hearing a conversation about trauma bonds and how bad they are and breaking them you're no Eve, you personally, Eve Bradley, Eve Bradley, <laughs> you are personally coming up with this aspect that can that can be implemented in a recovery in which it's a, a strategy, can, it's a piece can, of paper. They they can build trauma bond breaking habits and free yeah. themselves so that they can move on to a much more healthy and productive life and relationship. Absolutely. And, you know, okay. that's what the program does is we, we start off there. And then once we're in the swing of that, we mm. then move into starting to reconnect with our identity, starting okay. to build our self-worth, our self-esteem, doing things that are aligned okay. to our authentic self. And also 
we also get to learn loads of new things and the exciting thing about the group program is that it brings in some um, specialist healers and um, guests that are that I've connected with through my yeah. journey and that are all mm. survivors themselves and that's really awesome. really that's the best bit about the group program for me is that we get to share it with lots of other people and we get loads of expertise in. That is absolutely amazing. I love every ounce of what you do and who you are and what you're all about. Man, I tell you, um, man, whoever let you go, they lost their mind. You're, you're doing such great work to help people. You really are. And keep making those connections. Um, I know I mentioned somebody to you yesterday. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, just, I think Hannah is okay. awesome. She would be great. Now, you mentioned guest speakers and people coming in. Let, let's just talk about that a little bit before we end the show. Mm -hmm. You have this okay. 12, you have this 12 week, 12 week break the bond program. Okay. That's in good. that 12, 12 week program, each week you're accomplishing something. I'm going to give everybody just a, uh, we have gone an hour and 34 seconds and counting here. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to wrap up this show, but I'm going to give you an idea of what you can experience if you sign up for this program so that you can begin to recover fully uh, from a trauma bond uh, with Eve and her program. Here we go. Week one, connecting with one another, establishing your processing type, using my metric and deepening your understanding of the trauma bond. That's in week one. That's what you do. But week two, what happens in week two? So week two, we get straight in with one of our guests in and we've yeah, got a yeah. quantum healer coming in to do a group session, which is a really personal experience. You know, early on in the program, I want people to be connecting with one another, but I am fully sympathetic to that. It's early stages and we need to do some release. And that is what the lovely Absolutely. Ashley will be coming in to do. And yeah, she is Absolutely. amazing. Em ab absolutely beautiful because the time i'm going to move it along in week three mm -hmm. you in week three this is what you offer individuals understanding subconscious program and using technique mm -hmm. to identify limiting beliefs and shift perspective and mindset that's right but then we go to week four i'm skipping that we're gonna go to week five developing a deeper understanding of triggers and using mm -hmm. anchors anchors to enhance our resilience to them. Uh, it mentions there also, you say this, I will also be leading a sound and color healing session for energy rebalancing. Uh, it goes on. Yeah. That's just up to week five. Uh, I'm, uh, I just got to read this last one. I'm going to go to week seven. Focusing on mindfulness this week will be dedicated to meditation, uh, breath work, cultivating uh, self-belief, uh, in other words, so that an individual can recognize that they have control over what they yeah. have in their life, not feeling as if they are still under the thumb uh, of, their of their abuser. I'm just kind of wrapping things up. Everyone, you mm -hmm. have to like, comment, share, follow, like, comment, share, follow Eve's page. Uh, Eve, please. Here we go. You're going to tell us me to <laughs> say it, aren't you? <laughs> no, wait, no, wait. I got a better one than that. No. You want to type it in? Just go ahead and type it. Can you? Can you? I don't even know if you can. You probably can't. I don't know. Order. I don't know. Okay. But you can type it into the search box and you'll find it. Just type yeah, in you your go. easy life into the search box. Look for the one with the little smiley faces in between the words. And that's me. Okay. So I'm sending you stuff last night. Like I'm sending everybody, <laughs> for, you know, and, and I got to your, I got to your name and I went like, I am going to get on Eve. I, I, I love her to death. <laughs> But she got to do a short name for a senior citizen. You know, citizen. <laughs> we need to hijack the other person that stole my, I that what, had it I without it. the dots in. I saw it. I saw, I saw it without the dots, and I was going like, hmm. I was going like, how can we get that from her and give it to you? Do you know? <laughs> I was going like, no, no. no I, if I did, I can't say it now. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> so I can't say it. This is, this is an inside joke when I have to email uh, Eve or send her something, and I'm going like, uh, you have to see it. If you don't know, go type in. Yeah, have a look at my name. You'll get yeah. it. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll You're get going, it. Another dot? Another dot? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps telling me you don't exist. No, okay, because I did it wrong. Okay, all right, real quick, everybody, here we go. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me let me not ignore all of you. Oh, everybody's everybody's writing you. Okay, so everybody talking with each other. Uh, Pack coach is there. Everybody help each other. 
And by the way, if you need a coach, you got one right here in front of you, Eve, and you're going to find some others this weekend uh, yeah. in our Healing for Narcissism 2021, a free live event uh, via Zoom. The link is available. It will be posted by all six of us that are connected to this. Uh, it will be brought to you by Narc Abuse TV Network and the Rhythm Entertainment Productions. Uh, but it is Michelle Dixon that will be our host. Uh, but uh, it will be a panel of five individuals uh, who will be there. Eve will be there. Ask Anashka, uh, as well as uh, Trisha, uh, Sarah. I read and, Trisha's book the past couple of days. And, uh, I read oh, her book. You, it's the, so the good. Mis misaligned, yeah, yeah. So oh, every, so good. Uh, did I just miss somebody? I think I did. Uh, Sarah. You know, even Sarah, Sarah, but she's going to be there too. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Sarah, I jumped Sarah, in. Sarah, thank you very much. I love the teamwork. Uh, Sarah, who is, by the way, uh, I tease her. I tell her she's the queen of titter. I don't believe I just said it. She's a, she's a, I know. I'm just, I am so in trouble now. She is the queen of Twitter. Uh, and uh, her story is quite unique in itself because mm -hmm. she is not always of the best health, but uh, she has been putting on a fight of narcissism uh, that she's dealt with a generational narcissism and mm -hmm. from her family. Uh, so uh, we have a, a varied and variety filled uh, panel uh, that will do three Live events cost you zero, <laughs> nothing. Ask them questions and then go back to their individual pages and connect with their coaching, uh, whatever style works for you, and uh, they can be of assistance to you. This whole program that we will be doing this Saturday is the beginning of many that will provide positive, informative encouragement for you. You do not need to feel you're alone. You will have a variety of people that you can uh, choose from on the panel. And they will work with you and uh, talk with you as well and support you. Uh, so all of that will be the case. I'm going to say this about you. Let me go here. Uh, it says, thanks, everyone, for real. A huge relief to hear it's part of the deal. I really thought I should be alarmed by the feeling. That's what's happening in the chat when others are talking to one another. You and I oh, are that's talking. That's so good. Uh, Sharing that, that compassion. Lena, the... yeah. Everybody's working together. Um, that's amazing. But if you need a coach, there are coaches in the chat, and you have one in front of you, everybody. Mm. That's what we do here on Narc Abuse TV Network. This is not us just talking about the problem. We are solution-based because there are people here that can work with you. So in the chat, if you see the term coach, like the PAC coach and others, they're there to work with you. Uh, but Definitely. more importantly, you also have uh, my, my guests. And uh, I know some of you who ha have said this to me. You call everybody beautiful when they come on the show. I, I don't call a guy that. I call him handsome. But, uh, but <laughs> I say handsome. I say, Inside well, technically, yes, I say that because these individuals, Eve included, of course, without a doubt, they give up their time to have these discussions when they could go out making money or doing other things. And I appreciate that, and that makes them beautiful in my eyes, as well as my daughters, uh, who are my executive producers. So we find these individuals beautiful to us, that they're willing to give up their time. But they're not doing this so that you don't contact them. Reach out to them, please. <laughs> Reach out to them. Uh, the PAC coach is normally here in the chat, uh, and uh, my guest uh, is available to you. So please, don't mm -hmm. suffer in silence. Please. And we've got a range, range of resources. And I've got, well, I can't talk, well, I'm not going to take it at the time tonight, okay. but there's a free yeah. free course as well that I have, which yeah. definitely yeah. go and click the link in my bio because that is the start yeah. of, of some really special steps. Okay, don't, th don't think it's hard and, and don't uh, don't gaslight yourself into not getting help. Um, no. the abuse, you're worth the, abuse. the investment, you're worth please. your time. Go ahead. Last words, matter of fact, go ahead, please. Yeah, well, you know, if anybody feels like, you know, have they got the time, the energy, the financial resource, you know, be honest and ask yourself whether you're worth. And there's always a resource out there. It's about, you know, you really showing yourself that time, that energy and, and investing in yourself and you will reap the rewards. You really will. Because for every action, there is a positive and there's an equal but opposite reaction. And if you put it in, you get the good stuff back. Yeah, I love that. You're so good. Get the good stuff back. I love it. I love it. Okay, everybody, we love each and every one of you. We're glad you're here to Thank understand you so much. More, yeah. more, about, more about the trauma bond. But uh, if you want more of this from Eve, 
feel free to show up. Doesn't cost you a dime. Pass through, sit in, listen, ask questions, um, listen to some of the questions. There's going to be tons of them that are going to be answered yeah. in this free live Zoom uh, this weekend on Saturday. So feel free to do that. Uh, connect with Eve, DM her, send her a message, yeah, ask her a question. Gosh, sure. Yeah, ask her a question. She'll work with you. And ladies, I'm just going to say this, not forgetting you guys, but I am for a moment. Ladies, if you want to get a part of a Facebook group and let's say mm. uh, it's a custody uh, uh, swap on the weekend and you're sitting at home by yourself on a Friday, be, connect with Eve. Uh, she will help you make it through the weekend uh, on Friday Definitely. and on Saturday and on Sunday. She's uh, specializing in this. There's another reason why I like the work that you do. So if you want to know more about that, talk to Eve. Uh, Eve, thank you. We appreciate it. We survived thank it. Thank you. Hey, hey, wait. We did it. What? And no the power No power. On. I know. I was gonna say. That's what I was going to say. And the power is still on. Uh, it's, a, it's a long joke, you guys. Some work is being done here so that we can have a, a bigger studio and a number of other things. So, uh, uh, I thought it was going to just working. be me. Yeah. I, hey, <laughs> no, you did great because you kept talking. I was thinking, come on, let's put it all in just in case it cuts off. <laughs> we survived it. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. Hopefully, we will see you Saturday. Uh, we will see you all on, on Saturday. Saturday. All right? Thanks, Eve. You did great. We'll okay. see you later. Bye-bye.